welcome to another edition of uh, Beginner Breakdown. I am your host, Mike Hummer. Uh, a chess club hosted a big tournament over the weekend, the Missouri Class Championship and the uh, Missouri Novice Championship. The Missouri Novice Championship had over uh, 50 players. And uh, so we'll be going over some of the games. So this game we'll be going over is, uh, it, it's a quick one. It's board one on one of the divisions, okay? One of the classes. So at the end of the game, let's see if what class they were in. Under 1200, the novice, class B, master, all right? So, so here it is, board one for $150, or actually $300 and a plaque, okay? So white starts out with his queen pawn, uh, the player playing black, knight of six. So, so this is a good setup for white. He's got his uh, pawns connected. And so now he brings his other knight out. This is not good to try to challenge the center with just these knights. He needs some, uh, some pawns to, to help him out. All right, so white brings out his knight to f3. e6 is played, targeting uh, b4. So knight to c3, so now he gets the pin. Okay. So what is the best move for white here? It's a, it's a move that uh, Ben Feingold uh, really enjoys as well. Joe, you know? Queen C2. Queen C2, it, it does a lot. It protects the knight and stops this knight from coming in to uh, E4. So plays the move H6. Pie wasn't really necessary in this position. So white grabs the center with E4. Excellent. So he plays the move d6, and now it's time for white to attack. Okay, so you got all these three pawns out here, and you can do a lot of damage with them. So who is the only player protecting this bishop? The knight, right. So if we could try to get that knight out of there, Maybe so, maybe we can get a tactic going. It's not forcing, but it's, it's good. So this is along the lines of hope chess, as you're hoping, you know, he'll make a bad move. But this is also a good move that, that keeps the attack going. So it's a mixture of good moves and hope chess. So, if we could get this knight out of here, maybe something good can happen. Well, you play D5. Yeah, d5 attacks the knight. So now, so now if he moves the knight, as we'll see, it's not going to be very pleasant for, uh, for the player playing black. But black has an easy move that doesn't lose a piece here. Bishop takes knight, check, because it's a forcing move. And then we'll have to, uh, you know, let me take back with the queen. Because even if it takes our e-pawn, we can, we can snag this g-pawn and then potentially the knight. Okay? All right, so, but in the game, of course, he retreats to e7 here, and um, disaster is going to strike for uh, black. So basically, look for your checks and your captures, undefended pieces in your territory, and it's pretty easy to come to the conclusion of what this uh, tactic is. <laughs> Joe's got it. <laughs> Queen, A4. Queen A4, check, okay? Attack the undefended piece, double attack, and um, game over, okay? He decides he doesn't want to play on, you know, down a piece for, you know, the time control is game in two hours, so he doesn't want to sit there for three hours, and he just wants to go. So that was board one. Anybody have any guesses what division that was? <laughs> yeah, it's a trick question. Because uh, White played pretty well. Yeah, that was the Tommy uh, Julian game. No, no, this was the uh, the Class B uh, 
So white got $300 and a plaque in record time. OK, so now we'll show you a game that's uh, maybe not as good. But it does last longer. Here's a game from the uh, Class C Championship. The names are messed up here. Uh, Eric Hoffner. Eric got, uh, got a lesson Saturday night from me after the tournament. So, so he was really jazzed and really pumped to, uh, to win here. So let's check out how he does in this game against Wilson. All right, so Wilson starts out E4. Uh, we'll flip the board. Eric is our hero playing black. So he plays the Sicilian. He plays this D6 variation, which, which is pretty good for uh, beginners to play because if they ever try to get in E5 here, okay, we'll just take it, okay? So we don't have to worry about our knight getting attacked by E5. So, so it's pretty good. And we don't really have to worry about this check. I mean, it doesn't really do much. All right, so, so white plays the typical uh, d4, so takes, knight takes. We want to stay away from moves like e5 here, because it would create a hole in uh, this d5 square, and all it does is attack the knight and makes this pawn really, really bad on, uh, on uh, d6. So he plays knight f6, attacks the pawn. He protects, and now uh, g6 is played. We got adjourn in the house, excellent. <laughs> and uh, so bishop c4, so right if you play g6, there's no reason to ever wait. Just play bishop g7, but unfortunately he doesn't here. First he plays a6. So f3 solidifies the pawn structure, so now b5. Bishop back, and now bishop to b7. You see how with Eric's last couple moves, he played g6, which is nice, OK? And then he was two away from getting castled, bishop g7 and castle. But instead, he kind of diverted his, uh, his thought process. So now he's got this guy fianchettled, but he's still two away from castling. Unfortunately, white doesn't have a good way to uh, break through here on f7 or anything here. So bishop e3, knight up. So queen to d2. OK, so, so the queen and bishop are in a battery here. So obviously, they want to go to h6 here. OK, so, so black could just play bishop g7 here, bishop h6, castle. But that could get dangerous after h4, if they ever let me play it. OK. So he decided, I don't want to get uh, attacked on the king side. So he decides to play h5 here instead of bishop g7. OK. So rook d1, knight attacks the bishop. So he doesn't want double pawns, even though I guess knight takes, knight, and then knight could take. But anyway, so he's like, I'm going to challenge the bishop. So he captures it. Knight captures. And he brings his rook up. OK, so c3. And so now he's getting his pawn up here. h3. So, so now, the moment of truth. Why do you think Eric kept pushing this pawn? Obviously, at first, it was to stop bishop h6. But what do you think the point of h4 is? Mario, you, you know this answer. Yes, you do. <laughs> Get the rook to h5, OK? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And of course, this is the class C division, OK, guys? So <laughs> don't be afraid to play anybody. If their rating says 1,500, it's like they're still going to be playing like amateurs, because anybody not ranked 2,000 is an amateur. All right, so knight attacks the rook, and now it goes back. <laughs> so now, so now with, that, with that maneuver, black can no longer castle, period, in this game. He's got no place to go. So bishop attacks the pawn. But, but notice, even though black's king is in the center, 
he does have a lot of pieces guarding it, so it's very difficult for white to actually generate an attack on this uh, king. He should probably get castled himself and start like pushing this pawn and breaking through. All right, so queen a5 attacks the pawn, and so he protects with uh, b4. So it rooks back to h5, attacks the, uh, the bishop here. Knight attacks the queen, and so the queen goes back. A bishop back to e3, and knight here. All right. Hello, sir. Welcome to the class. Oh, no problem, no problem. So now white makes a mistake here. He puts his knight where it can get captured, so he gladly captures it. And now, if you're not really paying attention here, you have to take back with, well, if you take back with the queen, that's, that's trouble too, right? Right, it loses the queen, the knight takes check. But now you take back with the pawn, and now we have a tactic. It's a two-move combination. It involves, just like the last game, a double attack where the queen was attacking the king and the, uh, the bishop. Now we just find a, find a way to uh, attack two things at once, possibly with a fork, and we'll be, uh, we'll be in business. So what can we attack here? You see anything yet adjourned? Okay. Knight does what? Okay, okay. We're, we're actually attacking not just the queen and the pawn, we're actually attacking the queen and the bishop, okay? So now, notice when he plays queen to e2, what is all on this line here? The white king, the queen, and the bishop. So now we take it, and if the queen would take back, what move would we slam on the board here? Rook e5. Excellent. So, so there was no real excuse for white never to get castled in this position. Because, I mean, this, this h pawn was going nowhere. So when you keep the king in the center, especially when you don't have any pawns in front of you, uh, disaster can strike pretty easy. So it looked like an innocent uh, exchange here when he put his knight, attacks the queen, but after bishop takes, obviously we can't take back with the queen, so when he takes back with the pawn, he's doomed. And the uh, game concludes like this, rook to d3. So he chomps that pawn, rook, queen, well, queen and rook get in a line here, so they're attacking this knight, so he just retreats the knight, and now he's like, I give up. All right. He, got, he brought his knight to safety, and everything was good. So that was in the uh, Class B division here. So now, now let's see a game. This is why we're all here from the uh, Missouri Novice Championship, OK? Oh. And one of these guys, this is actually board one of the last round, okay? So we saw how the Class B guys played. So let's see how these guys uh, play here. All right, here we go. So white plays e4. White will be the, uh, the hero, maybe, in this game. We'll see. e4, e5. Knight attacks the pawn. Knight c6. Bishop to c4. Okay, so so I, I say it time and time again, even though Tatov might not agree. See how mad she was when her, when her uh, opponent played h6? She rambled on and on and on about how bad h6 was, but, but she didn't like it because she couldn't get any attacks going. So h6, I'm still going to say, is acceptable here. But bishop c5 is obviously the best move, followed by bishop e7. But when you play knight f6 and you don't know what you're doing, 
you're going to get smashed. Okay? So, so obviously, uh, the player playing black didn't know about d5, so the only other way to protect is e7. And it really doesn't protect, because after knight takes f7, guess what? You're not going to play queen takes knight anyway. Okay, so in the game, uh, you know, he, uh, he uh, played rook to g8. All right, so you see how rook g8 is in the same line as this bishop here, right? So if you could just move the knight, guess what? The, uh, the rook is attacked. So that's what he was thinking, and so he couldn't wait to take this, okay? So queen takes, bishop takes rook. So what would you guys play in this position? No, well, which one? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you could take first, queen takes e4, and if he blocks with the queen, guess what? We'll take this, and then we'll be okay. Okay, but uh, instead, he doesn't do any of that. The, this pawn is in a pin, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. This pawn's in a pin, and he, he knows about, oh, we gotta attack pin pieces, but if you can just take a pin piece, do it. Okay. So obviously, white should not play bishop takes because knight takes. All right. Instead, he gets castled here. OK. So now the right move is knight takes bishop. But the last thing you want to do, like in that last game we saw, is queen takes. And when, whenever your queen and king are lined up, bad things are going to happen, right? So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Better get divorced. Yeah, get them separated. Keep them separated. Yeah. That's why the king's in the castle and the queen's out doing her thing, you know? And that's how you should do it. I mean, this is not good. So, uh, so he attacks the queen. All right. So he could play f3 or he could just take with check, which is just take with check. And then after knight takes, we could get a pawn fork or we could just take the bishop. But he goes for the pawn fork. And, um, and so now he goes back and attacks the, the bishop again. So after takes, takes. This isn't doing so well for, uh, for black here. He gets castled, brings his queen out. Bishop, check, but that's OK. So now, obviously, you got checked. You know, you should just move, move out of the check, right? We don't want to go here, right? Or else we'd be putting our king and king and queen in the same line and rook f8, right? So we'll move to h1. But uh, instead he plays d4. And now after knight takes, he's threatening a lot of discoveries here. So, so the player playing white was obviously up a bunch of material, but now he's uh, fallen fast. So queen to d3. So what's a good move for black in this position? We see a bunch of double checks, right? But just because you can do a double check doesn't necessarily mean that's the best move, right? Even though it looks cool, it might not be the best. Anybody got any ideas? And black can get uh, back in this game, especially the way white's playing. Excellent, Mario. Yeah, knight takes c2, check, OK? Bishop, check. And uh, we'll go back to h1, and then we can eat the rook, OK? All right, but unfortunately, he does none of that. He plays rook to f8. I guess he's preparing knight to c2, check, mate. All right, so, so let's see if we can find a move for white to stop this checkmate. Adjourn. King h1. Oh, king h1. Oh, interesting. You're good. You're good. You're good. Because cause knight to c2 is no longer check. And it, obviously, rook f1 is not check, mate, because um, obviously, queen takes rook. Good. Good, adjourn. Good. So let's see what he plays. Oh, he plays bishop e3. OK, that was good, too. So now knight takes c2. And uh, it's too late. It's too late for all that stuff, OK?
So bishop takes, knight takes, bishop takes, knight up, and uh, it's just going to get over pretty quick here. So obviously, Augusty is a great move for white here. Queen f5 check. Now you don't even have to take, well, you can just take it. I mean, who wouldn't take it? I mean, you could probably get checkmate, but. Mr. Comer, yes, sir. Instead of queen f5 check, what? how about 97 check and then queen d5? <laughs> uh, he's just too good. He's too good. He's too good. All right, Grandmaster Ben Feingold found the right move, too. But, um, you know, this is good, too. Take all this stuff, you know. <laughs> Check. Probably should have taken the pawn. But now I'll take the pawn with check. <laughs> so, and now everybody sees a really cool mate here. Knight takes b6, checkmate. Okay. So now, obviously, you see that's a game from the novice, okay? Uh, while we're finding the other game, we'd like to congratulate uh, Kevin Powell. Um, he's a regular in this class. And uh, he, uh, he won the under 1200 prize, but we don't have a, a game of his. This is, uh, maybe you guys remember this guy from the uh, Summer Slam Bash edition, uh, Michael Pugachev. He's a uh, he's pretty good player. He, uh, he played in the novice as well. He didn't have uh, quite the performance he wanted, but that's okay. He's still young, he's, he's learning. So okay, so Michael Pugachev is playing with the black pieces here. Okay. So his opponent, uh, David, plays e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, so d4. And Pukachev plays a check, which is not recommended. So hopefully you guys don't play that because now he gets, white essentially gets a free move. But his opponent puts his knight there, so he's like, okay, I'll give you double pawns. So he got him. And now, of course, Michael Pukachev plays a very, very, uh, Bad move here, f6. Um, never play f6, remember? All right. So attacks the knight, knight e7. Now, if you really wanted to be ambitious here, you would play d6. Shove it down his throat. Um, but plays bishop to e3 here, and, and Pugachev wisely plays d6 before his opponent could. Bishop c4. So bishop g4 pins the... Uh, Pins the knight here. So white plays a4. And so now he can check and it's protected. Why he wanted to do that, unknown. So bishop d7. And now he's going to get his forces over there. So rook b8 protects the pawn. So bishop takes check. Wing takes. And now adjourn. you got to move. Bishop takes a7, why not, right? All right. So he obviously doesn't have time to uh, trap him because our rook is attacked. So he's going he's gonna to try something here. Instead of, you know, moving the rook and then, you know, queen takes and all that stuff, he's going to try to get his own attack going. So let's check this out. So if bishop takes, queen takes, is there any move we have to protect both of these? I see one, but I don't know if it's any good. Adjourn. All right, king e2, but then we have to keep calculating here, OK? Knight f5 check, right? King e3. Is is black okay here? <laughs> yeah. All right. So so it looks like he's he ran out of checks. Okay, and it looks like he's just down a rook. Let's see what the computer has to say about this. Yep, it looks pretty good. White's up uh, three points. Okay. So so that's what uh. But the player playing white should have done to Pugachev. But instead, he freaks out here. And, uh, and he plays after queen to g4. He plays rook to g1, which allows check. King f1. 
Let's check him again. King e1, check him again. King to d1. So now he's out of checks. So rook to a8. And so now queen takes pawn cannot be played because the rook hangs. So he retreats the bishop to safety. Plays b5, which I don't really understand. What's an obvious move for white in this position? <laughs> queen, takes pawn. queen takes pawn check. Yes, yes. Pawn ta yeah, pawn takes pawn. You're right, right. Because then you play qu king and queen, obviously, in the same line. Rook takes. So that's, that's a, it's not very good hope chess. But OK, but he just he totally ignores the, the threat and plays uh, bishop to d2. So now he can protect uh, the pawn here. <laughs> Wait, in this position. Queen, yeah, right, right, yeah, check. And then, if, oh, even if he plays c6 here, what, we can just, we just go back, right? Yes, adjourn. Yes. <laughs> Why don't you get up here? <laughs> and the white is just crushing. Excellent adjourn. Okay, so, um, so let's see. So, so all right. So he bishop d2, queen c5, rook protects the pawn, and uh, now he can take the pawn. Let's check this out. Okay. So he takes the pawn here, and now queen to b7 attacks the rook. So now black offers the trade. So he could, he could trade, but he's going for the checks. Rook b1, threatening. So what's, what's white's threat when he's threatening uh, rook b1 in this position? Rook b7, right. That looks bad. So queen a6, offering the trade. But what else is he threatening with queen to a6 here? Yeah, the rook, the rook on f1. So let's see, but he's, he wants to be checking here, so let's see if he's going to be fooled. So queen to c7, check. King f8. Rook moves the rook down with check, yeah, excellent, yep. Rook takes, queen takes, check. King f7. Queen c7 check. Knight to And of course he plays here now. And um what? <laughs> so he was so busy with his attack he forgot. Queen takes check and uh that's game. He got the last shot in. And uh Pugachev came through and uh won. <laughs> so all right. So we're going to finish with, uh, with a decent game here from the Class B division. Eric Tenchenko, who's, who we've shown two losses of him in this uh, series, so we're finally going to give him some props here. So Eric Tenchenko is playing the white pieces. Eric Ty, or, or, took a clear second undefeated. All right. So he starts out e4. His opponent, Dallas, uh, plays c5, f3, you know. So d5 is way too ambitious in this opening here. Um, so you can just take it. And worst case scenario is you're going to get an isolated pawn. Well, best case scenario. Worst case is what will happen. So he, he took, so now he... White is now up a pawn. And when you're up a pawn, it's good because you can always just give it back and um, then you're still just tied, you know? So, so always take free stuff. Bishop b5, bishop e7. So, so Eric is up a pawn, he got castled, so he's playing pretty well. h3 stops any kind of uh, 
pin here. And so he likes H3, so he decides to play A3 here. So now in this position, I wish Eric was here so I could ask him. Okay, so obviously why did black play knight to E4? Yes. Right. So do we want to protect that pawn? The answer is yes. I mean, why, why do you play a3 if you're not going to play b4? I mean, we, we might want to take this knight before we play b4, but I just don't get it. All right, so he, instead of defending his pawn, he plays knight to d2 and just lets it happen. And then, of course, what move do you think white plays in this position? b4, b4 right? <laughs> yeah, it would be a lot cooler if you had a pawn on c5, buddy. All right. So he got a tempo. Wow, OK. I'd rather have a pawn than a tempo. All right, so now he takes the knight. Pawn takes. And now knight attacks the bishop and the pawn. So he protects the pawn. And so knight takes, pawn takes. And uh, you know, it's a roughly equal position here. I mean, I might almost like black in this position. You got even amount of pawns. He's got one isolated pawn, but he's got all these nice center pawns. So, I don't know. All right, so queen to g4. All right, he's getting the attack going here. So now we have a lot of different ways we can uh, protect this pawn. I personally like e5, but uh, he chooses rook to f6 because I guess that stops bishop to h6, all kinds of. That shenanigans. So white gets his pawn going. So rook attacks the queen. Queen to h3. h5. So like in that other game where black was putting his rook up and down, let's see if it works out good for black or bad for black. Because the rook was the hero in that first game because he got the, uh, the potential pin on the e uh, file. So let's see if this rook maneuver is going to work out for black here. So rook a to e1. So it's usually never a good idea when you have these two rooks to, I mean, you got to think like, do I want a rook here maybe later, rook here maybe later, rook here. But by playing this a rook to e1, you know, this rook can't hop over. So you're really uh, limiting yourself by playing that. I guess, adjourn. what do you think he wants to get this F file open? That's why he's playing it. <laughs> well, let's see if he ever moves the F pawn. All right, E5, all right. So now, so now uh, we're going somewhere here. So queen F5 attacks the rook. So how do we want to defend this rook? Or do we want to just let him have it? Adjourn. What, what, what's the answer? You don't have it? Anybody else? So, so obviously with queen f5, it's a double attack, right? It's attacking the rook and the pawn. You got to be really careful how you uh, protect this rook here. Could almost protect it. Yeah, you could protect it with the queen. You could protect it with the knight. You could just move it. So instead, so, so let's see what the computer actually has to say about this. I'll be interested to see what, what his thoughts are. So, so yeah, it's like an either rook f6 or queen to d6. And then you're going to lose a pawn, but, you know, it's better than losing the alternative, okay? All right, so he decides to put rook to g4. So this is a very awkward rook here, okay? And when rooks are deep in your territory, especially when it's uh, positions kind of like jumbled or something, it doesn't have many spaces to go to, uh, bad things are going to happen. Because if you look at this rook now, right, what's the only place it can go right now? H4, H4 right. So 
you f3 takes now where's the only place this root can go or is that a trick question nowhere, nowhere. so what do we do to pieces that can't go anywhere g3, g3 attack them right and should he just give up here probably but he's going to fight on and um, it's not going to be good though but you might as well fight on all right, he pins the pawn. So now, obviously, we can play queen takes uh, h5 here. But he doesn't want it. We could play that. But, oh, well, he, he gets his king out of the way. Rook attacks the queen. Queen back. Pawn up. Takes. Rook takes check. Knight takes. Knight up. Obviously, we know what to do here. Pin it. Yeah, yeah, pin it. Excellent. And now, yeah, when you're up, you can just trade. And, um, you know, he's got nothing left. And he doesn't want to play on anymore because he's got no pieces, okay? So that is that. You guys want to see uh, one more puzzle before you leave? All right. Yeah, all right, here comes the puzzle, if I can find it. You gotta hang tight here, though.